Hello everyone and welcome to Blue Tengu's live game development show. Uh, live again this week, even after a week of classes. Somehow managed to get enough sleep. <laughs> well, we'll see how how well my brain spins around today. But uh, let's jump right into it because we do have a lot to get done. Uh, jumping to the desktop in Trello.com. Uh, if you search Trello and Project Skyrim, you can get to this public uh, task list. But uh, since the last episode, in between last episode and this episode, I did uh, fix the altitude tutorial, so it shows the mouse moving in just one direction instead of kind of going back and forth. Uh, also, the opening room, I did widen it a bit to avoid the fade out stuff, uh, because before you were getting too close to the edge, so it would fade out even though uh, even though you weren't like near the edge or ready to go off the screen or anything. So those are just two minor things I was able to fix. Obviously, I had classes, so I couldn't do much overtime. But today... And Ruben RME, bonjour, hello, konnichiwa, hello, yes, good to see you, <laughs> good to see every hello, nice, nice, nice. Well, welcome to the show, Ruben, uh, we're just getting started, as you could probably tell, for this week, uh, this is episode 48, so we've been doing uh, season 2 for 48 episodes now, 48 weeks, with the goal of at least getting some sort of beta-ish thing ready by episode 52 after one year. Uh, as mentioned in the chat a little bit before the show, should mention it now too, uh, July 10th and 17th are the two Sundays uh, that I won't be able to stream. So looking at the calendar, if I can bring it up here. Ah, thank you for the follow, Ruben. Good to, good to meet you, by the way. Um, always tell people, but if you are working on anything yourself, like game dev or whatever, feel free to post links. Uh, so July 17th, we do this every Sunday at this time. Uh, for about two hours a week, but the, let's see, the 10th and the 17th, I have classes. With the 17th, I don't have a class on the 16th, so I could, you know, switch the show and try and do it there, and I could try to do a double episode to, to this this Sunday. We'll see. We'll see. I don't like missing episodes. Uh, I don't like just skipping weeks, so either I do double episodes to make up for it to try to change the time. Uh, <clears throat> I usually like uh, double episodes better than changing the time, because obviously if I change the time, uh, no one knows when, <laughs> when I'm actually broadcasting, because everyone's used to this time now, finally. We'll see, we'll see. I'll make announcements about it. But, uh, and Ruben, I mean, RME, obviously, uh, I'm working on something, but no links yet. Okay, that's cool, but if you do ever have a link, feel free to come, come in and drop it, drop it off. Or you can tweet it, uh, btengu, B-T-E-N-G-U, on Twitter. So, uh, today we've got to finish off these tutorials. Uh, looking through the task list of what we've got left, we've still got a few big tasks left. Uh, in terms of polishing, these are all going to be kind of post-episode 52 tasks. Uh, bug checking, you know, improving the sprites, improving the sounds, you know, kind of brushing it up is going to be after episode 52. So it's a little different from Project Spaghetti, where we actually got the whole thing done by episode 52, obviously, with other commitments, and the fact that this project is much, much bigger. It's uh, it's difficult to do everything by episode 52, but these are the things we do want to get done by episode 52 quite a bit. Going to require some overtime, obviously. Um, in terms of, let's see, episodes. Do I have episode lists? No, I guess I got rid of that. Uh, before I actually had it kind of marked off by episodes, but I just mushed them all into one giant task list again. Probably, let's see, like this week it'll try to be finishing off the tutorials. Uh, closing stage, probably do that in overtime. GUI stuff, that might take an episode. And uh, converting voice to, to uh, well, getting the female voice in and uh, converting a few things over. We'll take a few more episodes. We're getting close. We're getting close. I think we'll make it. Uh, but that depends on today. Uh, let's get these things done. So we've got a few tutorials out of the way. We've got altitude tutorials, movement tutorials, circling tutorials. We've got those ones out of the way. Now it's landing. Like when the player is low in altitude over a beach, they need to know how to land because uh, that's not very intuitive. And the fact that they have to actually collect 
artifacts to find monoliths, and when they find a monolith, they can move to the next room. Those are kind of the things we have to teach once the player knows that. There's, there's other things in the game, but I think they can discover that stuff. Like, for example, if you walk into a river, you get swept away. I don't want to do the whole Japanese game thing of, like, overdoing it, uh, like, every single thing that comes comes by you stop the game and put up a message or something i don't want to do that it is a game about discovery and the more i do that the less it's about discovery but i think at least for landing and probably moving to other rooms if i don't teach the player how to do that then they just don't know what to do in the game so i think that's the minimum we have to do but let me catch up to the chat here uh and hellfire asks will episode 52 be the final episode for skyring then uh not too sure i don't think it'll be the final episode because we'll still be brushing up so what i'll probably do is uh keep doing the broadcast at the regular time every week but instead of doing you know episode 52 53 54 with like the animated show and all that stuff i'll just focus on brushing up and uh in terms of the beta itself whether to whether to actually put it up on HIO, because like for people who bought last season's game, Project Spaghetti, you've had access to the game the whole time. Um, so in terms of like beta testing, if you know, there's still that that way to go about it. I don't really like charging for games before they're like ready or anything, because I don't like doing that stuff, the early access stuff. It's not it's not in my blood, I guess. But you know, I could do that if if people would want me to do that, but I would rather give you a finished game, especially since, you know, it's not like some big AAA title or something where, <laughs> you know, early access is actually something cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's a much more low key minor game. So it'd be better to provide a finished experience, I think, but you know, having beta testers and stuff like that would be nice. I have to think about that, but, uh, episode 52 won't be the final episode with Skyrim. Probably, you know, given the number of tasks we have, there's there's not a whole lot to do but you know things like menu art title screens the stuff i'm not good at <laughs> the art stuff uh and you know making trailers and things like that it's it's time consuming it's because i'm not good at it exactly and arisa 401 drop by you made it you did you did remember the show so that's cool got hooked up by the terraria soundtrack nice 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 yeah i don't I think I remember the Terraria soundtrack too well. I remember like Starbound a little better, but that's cool. So Risa 401, good to see you. So let's jump into this. So tutorial landing. Let's show you where we're at in the game itself here. Yeah, Hollow Fire. I would imagine. Let's see. You know, just a haven't actually tried to estimate the number of remaining tasks, but I would assume by the end of summer, Skyrim would be wrapped up. So, new game. So, we've got a couple of tutorials in here. Like, there's the movement tutorial, got the mouse. Once I get the boomerang, I get the boomerang tutorial. Just hold the mouse button, please. And, for example, you know, tutorials on you know, if you use the boomerang on ground enemies and destroys them. I don't think we have to go that far in teaching the player because. You know, it, it is a game of discovery to figure it out. The the beach, we've got the takeoff stuff. We've got rotation. We've got circling. And there's the, the altitude thing. So this is climb and altitude. So like if I bring up the debug screen, in the upper left corner you see a value called Z. That's the altitude. Three is the lowest that you can be when you're flying. But if I pull back on the mouse, that goes up. Once I get to about four, you know, the, the tutorial finishes. And we've got some crazy stuff going on with the tutorial, but there we go. So the next thing is landing itself. Uh, since landing is a process of when the player actually gets over a beach, there's just this brief window of opportunity where they can land. Uh, so it'd be like if they're over the beach, I'd have to like 
show the mouse like left mouse button clicking so that they know to do that. Uh, so it's not going to be an easy thing to do to tell them how to do that. Let's see, the thing is they need to find a beach, so whether they know to go over a beach, the other thing is they have to be low in altitude. Um, so showing them a tutorial of going down in altitude is also kind of important. Yeah, because it's, it's getting those two things lined up that's going to be the hard thing to kind of teach a player. Obviously, you know, if I use words, it's very easy. Just say, drop an altitude, find a beach, click the left mouse button. There you go. Uh, sometimes words, words are worth a thousand pictures. <laughs> sometimes the other way around works. Uh, the human language. Uh, but, in our case trying to use pictures as much as possible to get away from words because words would kind of spoil the atmosphere and how's the clouds the tutorial is looking good thank you very much and Ruben this looks pretty damn good thank you very much uh, been working on it for the past year it's you know graphic graphics wise this is <laughs> this is as good as I can do but you know thank you thank you very much I think it is it is a pretty fun game I think it's turning out pretty well uh, didn't think I would get this far <laughs> didn't think I would get this far at all. Because uh, when I originally thought of the game idea like a year ago, I pictured it being more of like kind of a top-down shooter in a way, where it's like you were just going straight up and just circling enemies as you went up. That would have been a fun game too, but I think in my system I wanted to get kind of an adventure game out of my system. So that's kind of how things I think ended up as they did. And of course, like when you guys were here in the very beginning and we were chatting about what we should do with the game, you know, people mentioned you know, why not go to the ground or, you know, do these other things. And that kind of got built into the system as well. And nighttime is falling, so it gets darker and darker and darker. Okay. So landing, 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 landing. I guess when they get into a new map, I mean, you know, we're going to have to kind of force the player. I don't like doing that uh, very much because, you know, I want to have let the player have the freedom to do what they want to do with the game. But I think in this case, to be able to land, they have to be at a low altitude, and that's just something we can't convey. If we don't use text and numbers, we just kind of have to force the player to go down to a lower altitude, which means the opposite of that tutorial we just saw where you were pulling back to go up in altitude. We probably just have to keep that tutorial running for as long as the player is not at a low altitude. And once they get to a low altitude, then we stop the tutorial. So it's like, okay, I guess I'm doing things right. And then try to point them to a beach. That's going to be tricky as well. Pointing them to a beach may not be the best thing. But when they get over the beach, we just have to show the mouse left mouse button clicking. So all this is going to be in tutorial. Uh, timelines, altitude up, altitude down. I think I already have what I need. I just have to t put it in, basically. So I probably do have a version of the mouse going up, reset, up, reset. Going back. Okay, it's kind of working, it's just that it's not going up far enough. Because it's showing up, it's going up a little bit, and then it's kind of resetting. So that's that's our problem with it right now. So it's probably something pretty easy to fix, thankfully. There we go. Okay. Got it. Alright, so that, that tutorial's working now. But what I should do is put that tutorial... Yep, buddy, in this one, should move that tutorial to here instead of having it back there, uh, because otherwise the player has gone down in altitude, they've moved to another room and they have to go down in altitude again, which is kind of weird. Uh, so I have to fix that. Okay, 
So let's see, let's make sure that you move to the actual game room before I show that altitude of you going down. So I've got the fade and move to the next room after completing the, the drop tutorial. The other option is to make sure that the player starts the next room at the lowest altitude. That might be the smart thing to do. Okay, so I've got altitude three. Let's see what happens if I go up. Okay, if I go up in the air, uh, it's telling me to click the right mouse button. The alarms aren't working, uh, so I need to fix that. It's probably because it's constantly calling that is the problem. And even if I get down to three, that mouse is still there. Let's see what happens when I get over a beach. So we've got problems to fix, but they're not as... So far, they're not as bad as I thought they would be. And even when I'm over the beach, that mouse is gone. Okay. Those are the problems we have to fix after the break. <laughs> Leave that for future, Eric. Um, what we are doing now is fixing the landing tutorial. We've got... We've got the thing triggering, but I think it's triggering every single time it goes through that step, and I think that's what's causing the problem. That would be my guess, based on the way things look. Up and we're down. That's another bug, so we'll fix that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, the mouse blinking thing. That's kind of interesting. Probably it was just a timing thing. Like, there was probably something that just mistriggered and caused that to happen. So we're too high up in the air to land, so it's going to keep giving this, us this until we go down in altitude to three. We're going to get our blinking mouse back. We're over the beach. Nothing's showing up. So the beach thing's still a problem. And the fact that it's like blinking is a problem. Okay, what's causing the blink? Okay, I don't have a blinky mouse, which is good. If I go up in the air, do I get my tutorial? Yes, I do. Okay, so until I go down to altitude 3, the mouse fades away. Okay, we're, we're doing good, we're doing good. Uh, we still have the problem of the, the beach mouse thing not showing up, so that's still a problem. But I think that's probably just me missing, you know, an alarm or setting something wrong. When I get down to the ground, yep. Okay. So, we're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, I'm over the beach. It tells me to click. If I move away from the beach, that goes away. So we've got the tutorial. I think it's working. Click. And does it go away? No, it doesn't go away. That's the only problem. Uh, is making the mouse go away, but otherwise we've got things working. So that's good, that's good. Uh, let's see, tutorial manager, just one thing to go. So, let's see. If instance exists, object player free. Else we need to do that. Okay, we're not actually shutting off the mouse is the problem. So let's do that. And we should be done with that tutorial. Get things nice and lined up. Unindent, unindent. Okay. And we don't need the tutorial state stuff. We'll set this back to nothing. Yeah, we just want to fade things out. Okay, so the mouse should go away now. We'll find out next time, but I think we're good. Um, so we've got that tutorial out of the way, so let's look at our task list here. Landing, done. Okay, uh, moving to rooms. So this is a tutorial that's going to have to trigger maybe the first time the player finds a monolith. The monolith is the thing that allows them to move to the next room. But do we really need a tutorial for it? Let, I'll show you. I want to get your opinion on this. We'll see. 
let's see. We'll use the debugging functions to quickly find a monolith, and I want to get your opinion. Because with the monolith, the thing we do have is we do have the beam of light. Uh, the thing the player may not figure out is that they actually do need to follow that beam of light to move on, but, you know, do you really need to tell the player that? Let's continue. Alright, so this is my debug display. If I follow the yellow line, I'll get to a monolith. Because in terms of the game, they need to move to the next room before anything happens. But, you know, it is a game about exploration, so if they, you know, it's hard, it's hard to judge, it's hard to judge. Sometimes you want to give players as much credit as you can because, you know, if you keep getting in their way with tutorials, it gets annoying. But, you know, sometimes you, you can't help but give players too much credit. Uh, like for me, as a gamer, if I see a giant beam of light <laughs> shoot, shooting out from something, I assume I have to follow that light. But maybe that assumption is, is not for everyone. It's sometimes hard to tell. And you never know, because people could get distracted by something else. Uh, like if a lot of enemies are swarming them, maybe they just don't really even notice the beam of light. Maybe it's not as visible as you think it is. There's all these things that can kind of pop up. But here's a monolith. We arrive. That's what happens. Uh, obviously the beam of light is still very, uh, very square. As gamers, like Decent Sprint, Rentum, House of Klaus, 123 Gas, everyone in the room. As gamers, if you see this, do you think it's it's clear enough that you need to follow this thing? Because here's what happens. You follow it. You follow it, you follow it, you take off, you keep following it. If you get turned around, you're just going to follow it back to the monolith, so that's not necessarily a problem. I mean, one problem could be that if you're if you if the monolith is pointing halfway across the map or something, maybe you start to think, you know, wait a minute, is this thing actually taking me anywhere, or is it just, you know, some weird like light feature? You know, you. It, given how long it takes to get to the edge of a room, maybe you start to think, like, eh, I don't know if this is what I should be doing or not. What I'm thinking is, even if we do do a tutorial, we can't do a vi like one of those mouse things, because there's it's not really a control issue. It's not like you have to press some buttons or circle the mouse or something to get things to happen. It's just that you have to follow it. So what could be the most important thing is to make sure that when you find your first monolith that the voice makes it very clear that you're supposed to follow it like the voice could say follow the light to the to the future or something you know whatever they say uh the other thing is to actually just allow text in this case because there's really no way to visually describe it uh, let's see, there's other options. There's options like having an arrow on the player that's pointing where they're supposed to go. It just depends on how heavy-handed you want it to want to get. So there we go. We've reached the edge of the room. We've moved to the next room. There we go. We're now in, let's see, the jungle area. Uh, decent scrim, that would probably mean something to me. I would figure the beam meant something. Okay, so this is about the beam, the tutorial beam. I would figure the beam meant something. I wouldn't think it had no purpose. And uh, Tarentum said, I know that nothing is added without purpose, so I'd follow it. Uh, House of Claus said, I don't know if I would follow it, but I think it's a cool feature. Someone will follow it. Someone will know the secrets. I think at least 50% more people would follow it if it told them to go. Always some rogues. Okay, that is a good point. And uh, Tarentum said, my problem would be feeling like I'm guided in an otherwise open world. That is the balance. And uh, Decent Scrimp said, not sure how hard it would be to do, but what if the beam pulsed in the direction it's, go it's going? Kind of like lighted arrows. You know how the first one lights up and then the next one lights up in sequence. Not saying the light needs to be an arrow, of course, uh, but if it pulsed in the direction you should be going in. Decent Scrimp, that is a very decent idea, man. 
Yes, yes, that is a very decent idea. Because if the beam is not just static, if there is actually movement, I think you know that would cover more of those people that House of Clouds was talking about, those rogues that are going to think, okay, there's a beam of light, great, but you know, it's not, it's just there, you know, it probably has some meaning in the game, but maybe I'm just supposed to wander around and activate more of these things, you know, but if it did move in a direction, just as a human being, you're ex the sheep we are, <laughs> you're probably going to start following it. I'd probably follow it if it was pulsing in a direction. We have basically finished off the tutorial. Decent Scrimp was just in here and uh, kind of gave us a hint on how we can do the, uh, the leave the room tutorial. Rather than doing a kind of in your face tutorial, what we can do is with this beam that we've already got, we can have the particles kind of flowing in the direction you're supposed to go. <laughs> Uh, the particles are working, but they're too subtle. But I can fix that afterwards. They are flowing in the right direction, more or less. Like, they're all flowing that way. They're a little off-angle, so we'll have to fix that. But, if I can make the particles a little less subtle, and I can make them faster, and flow down the beam. I think this should be enough. Right now they're they're a little hard to see because before they were just kind of decoration, so didn't want them to be too in your face. But you know, even if at this altitude you can see the particles and they're flowing out of the room, I think that'll be enough for the player. So that's good. That's good. Let's see. Tutorial moving to room. So I need to brush up that tutorial. Uh, particle, or the exit particle, I should say. That shouldn't take too long. Uh, particles always do take longer than I expect, though, so let's see. Exit particle. Float out of the room. Once that's done, I think we're okay. For tutorial monoliths and artifacts, you know, talking with Tarentum and just thinking about it, I think the player, as long as they know how to take off, land, circle enemies, I think they have enough to play the game. The rest should be up to them. Pyro. Explore. Find things. You know. Learn it on your own. So let's move these to the archive. Rather than, you know, having text pop up and say, go find artifacts, or now that you found an artifact, go find a monolith, things like that. <laughs> and Trentum is giving, my, giving me my torrent and my time's up, telling me that we are out of time. But I will do that later. What we did today, we got the landing tutorial out of the way. We fixed a few things up, so the player should know how to land now. At least they'll be able to land once to get rid of that tutorial. It is a little bit in your face, but until the player knows how to land, they really don't have the tools they need to explore the world. So that gives them what they need to do. In terms of moving to rooms, I think this exit particle, the idea that Decent Scrimp had, is what we should be doing. That is episode 48. <laughs> the end of its BT distractions. I love distractions. Lots of rain. No. No. Episode 49. I guess my brain did work out this week. I uh, had classes and not enough sleep as usual, but uh, I think last night I went to bed early enough to kind of make up for it. Okay, episode 49. Let's see. With that, we've got 49, 50, 51, 52 before we're kind of done with the game and all we can do is brush up. It's kind of like a and beta, I guess, early beta, is what we're shooting for with episode 52. Basically, no more adding game features, no more breaking things that are already working. Just switch out graphics and stuff like that. What do we need to do? Ah, uh, trigger Last chance. <laughs> based on player actions. Try to do that in overtime. Try to do that in overtime. That's all kind of overtime-ish stuff. 
that's all over time -ish stuff. Closing stage, GUI stuff, Helligator. Figuring out what to do with Pandabits' Helligator. That's something I'll have to think about. Kind of a secret Helligator thing. And controller support in the menu, that's one possibility. The other thing is getting those tiles in. This is kind of important. Let's do that. I think that's what we have to do. Because uh, we need to get... Yes. <laughs> yes. We need to get those other tiles in the game. Um, at least where we can replace the graphics if we need to. I think that's part of what we need to do. In terms of features, I think that's Shall we play again? it. Yeah, and we'll save controller support for next time. So next week, uh, from starting from next week, I'm going to start adding more hex tile variety, and I think that's going to do it for most for the most part with some UI tasks remaining as we go. That was episode 48. Let me jump off, get rid of that air. Panda bits, you didn't see that. We never have any bugs. Thank you for watching our game development show. You can catch past episodes in this one over at youtube.com slash Studio. If you're watching this later on YouTube, come drop by the live show we do every week on Twitch. That's Twitch TV Blue Tengu. Our times are Sundays, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Japan, which translates to Saturdays, 4 to 6 Pacific. 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific, 5 to 7 Mountain, 6 to 8 Central, 7 to 9 Eastern. If you're in the UK, it starts midnight Saturday, back, well, 11.59 p.m. Saturday night until 2 a.m. Uh, if you're in Japan with us, obviously, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. If you're in Australia, which is pretty similar time zone-wise to Japan, it starts anywhere from 8 to about 11, depending on where you live in Australia. If you're in New Zealand, it starts at noon. But we do always announce what we're doing through Twitter, so follow us at Btengu uh, to keep track of when the live show starts or episodes go up, or follow us on Twitch or YouTube. And of course, you can see what we're up to anytime at our site, bluetengu.com. If you pitched in a little extra for Project Spaghetti over at HIO, you have the software key file. You can grab prototypes. I put one up last week, I think. Uh, I could put this one up as well. And of course, we, we would really appreciate any support you give us uh, getting Project Spaghetti greenlit on Steam. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.